Star Wars Acolyte is hiding a very dark secret with the most recent episode. Something that makes the High Republic even darker than we all expected. Welcome to Star Wars Uplink. Acolyte Episode 6 is here, and I feel like it represents a lot more of what the show wanted to be the whole time before some of... I, I don't know if it's like behind-the-scenes stuff, or it's like the show was pitched as a movie and then it got stretched out, or I don't know any of the specifics, all of those are theories. Right. But it feels like it was, it was supposed to be different, and what it was supposed to be like originally is more like this episode and last episode. Mm-hmm. But we're going to talk about that later on in the video, so stay tuned for our full thoughts. I want to talk about the theory that's been going around with The Stranger and Vernestra Rowe. Ooh. I feel like a lot of people who aren't familiar with the High Republic may not realize that she is several hundred years old. Mm. Uh, she is a, a, a key character in the High Republic era and is, is quite present there. A lot of High Republic fans were very hyped to see her in the show. But along those same lines, I also don't think a lot of people realize, or maybe they underestimate, the age that Kamir or the stranger is. Mm. Yeah, usually when a character reiterates <laughs> a couple times that, yeah. no, no, I, I'm old. I am actually quite old. That Yeah, there's the reference of us... like it being a really long time ago. Yeah, it's like you don't have to tell us how old you are but you saying more than once that it was a long time ago probably means it was a long time ago <laughs> uh -huh. so it makes me wonder if there is a bit more familiarity you have that reference with soul in episode five where he says oh you don't recognize me mm -hmm. it could have i took it as a reference to him on the planet being Kamir and being right. like the bumbling like uh shop owner basically right but maybe it's a, a deeper reference. Mm -hmm. I kind of got that. I kind of felt like it was a reference to like back in his Padawan days or like mm -hmm. back in when he was training as a Jedi. For some reason, that was kind of my first initial reaction. Maybe that's just because that's what we see mostly is yeah. like when someone's like, you don't remember me, especially uh -huh. when they're like trying to communicate force, like force wise, yeah. like you don't sense to my forceness like you don't remember how i feel uh -huh. I, yeah i don't know sometimes that seems to be what they're trying to get across but who knows yeah i think we can take it as face value but mm -hmm. i do think there is at least a history with vernestra Rowe and the stranger mm -hmm. i i think a lot of people are, are recognizing the strange pattern of the scar on his back yeah and then we have the, the first official uh, lightsaber whip in live action. Obviously, yeah. this is Vernestra Rose lightsaber, and it's a very, very unique style. Uh -huh. uh, takes the idea. We were joking that it's <laughs> very dangerous. Like, yeah. Uh, there's always that question of like, would you rather have a, a wizard's wand or would you have a lightsaber? And I've always been of the mindset of like, let's me let let me get the wizard wand because yeah. I would probably chop my leg off if I had a lightsaber. It's so true. And adding this complexity of, like, the whip to the lightsaber, oh, oh my gosh, mm -hmm. it makes me panic. Like, I'm like, yes. oh my gosh, like, I would have that thing turned off all the freaking time. Uh -huh. You can't let it rest anywhere. It's going to yeah. melt through whatever uh -huh. it's landing on. It stresses me out, man. Yes. <laughs> Uh, but, but I do think there's something deeper there. I also mm. think there's something darker to Venestra than we all recognize. I think that's what this is. I, I think what they're doing is they're mm. setting up the fall of this era of the Jedi. Um, the High Republic era is coming to a close and we're getting closer to the original trilogy time right. frame or the prequel time frame. The, the Star Wars Skywalker saga time frame. It's 100 years before the Phantom Menace. So I, I feel like what they're representing is the Jedi here are going to an end. Mm -hmm. they're, they're slowly getting corrupted by their own hubris, mm -hmm. I feel like. More secrets are being hidden away from each of the individual people. Mm -hmm. The Jedi High Council is more of a figurehead than anything. Like, they don't necessarily know what's going on in their own backyard. Like, these yeah. individual people are making more of the decisions in the galaxy than they are so it makes sense for them to be a little bit more like out of the loop but I do think this idea of the stranger or Kamir being the Padawan of Venestra Rowe would be mm -hmm. very fascinating um, and also maybe believing him to be dead 
And that was the thing that maybe kicked him off onto this darker path. Because we have the mention of a fallen Jedi mm-hmm. in this episode by Mog, um, <laughs> who, who believes Sol is the fallen Jedi that attacked everybody. Right. So uh, there is clearly a history of fallen Jedi. Mm-hmm. But what they don't recognize is Khmer, the stranger, perceives himself as the Sith. Yes. We've got a lot playing around here. Um, once again, they're leaving the audience very much in the dark, mm-hmm. um, which I'm which fine Which is fine with. Yeah, if no. we had more episodes. Yeah, it's getting a little stressful now that we only have, what, two episodes yeah. left? Oh my gosh. But yeah. back on topic. So Vanestra being the master of the... The, the Jedi, the original Jedi. Jedi master. Yes, the yeah. original Jedi master that kind of led the stranger on his darker path or whatever i think it, it's very plausible because it, you definitely get the sense that she knows more yes <laughs> she knows a lot more of what's going uh-huh. on something to tip the scales is what she specifically yes. says under her breath uh-huh so what what is this reference like i don't think that was something that soul said no so this is definitely something that's coming from her past something that she knows and this is i feel like this is the whole season uh-huh. here it's just jedi hiding secrets from other jedi because uh-huh. clearly soul has something to hide uh-huh. from vernestra yeah and all of these the other jedi, jedi masters that yeah have died are all hiding something uh-huh. as well so there's definitely this theme of darkness in the jedi that I think they're pulling at with the stranger, um, with him knowing things and uh, May knowing things, and no one really telling Osho about what's going on. Uh-huh. No one telling us, the audience, what's going on. Uh, so we're all just trying to figure out what these secrets are. Yes. I kind of feel like the season should have started with episode five. Mm-hmm. Like, imagine we started with that opening where it is this masked figure. I, I feel like the whole reveal of of the master of like of the stranger being this like hidden figure i don't think we need that yeah it doesn't need to be explained that he's on that planet that's mm-hmm. how he's found there like if we start with episode five we have may going away from her path on the dark side right i feel like it would have been a much stronger storyline to have this corruption and this switch up and that's where this the mystery of like oh who's who and what's what like mm-hmm. we could have believed that may was osha this entire time right and like I, I feel like it would have been a much stronger story if we started from that perspective mm-hmm. and then had eight episodes to go from that point on to make it more cohesive of a story and play into the theory or the theorizing and play into the questions that we all have without many answers i feel like that would have been a much stronger storyline mm-hmm. than what we're given now where it's like crap we've got two episodes to go and it feel i don't know if the ending is going to be very satisfying at right. this point because they've set it up to where two episodes basically everyone has to die yeah like that's i'll be surprised if more than 20 percent of the characters that we have on screen in the last episode if they are still alive right I think it would have been a really cool juxtaposition if they had started kind of where you're saying, Mm -hmm. where the Sith or just the dark side user didn't have to pretend, didn't have to hide, didn't have to have secrets, Uh but all the Jedi do. Yes. Like that would have been such a great story piece Mm -hmm. to have this like... And it really showcases the difference of the Sith Mm -hmm. and the Jedi. Yeah. I mean, just this last episode, like seeing Kamir in the white robes. Yeah. And like representing him as like this good figure, but knowing his intentions, I think is so fascinating. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think that they could have played a lot more into seeing kind of the equalizing these two groups equalizing Mm -hmm. the bad or the bad intentioned versus the good intentioned yeah which is like those it's so gray like Uh depending on how you look at things so much of the show feels like and i think it's exemplified with this episode in the last two so much of this feels like a draft one of a script for sure it feels like they didn't have enough time to go back and really fine-tune the story that they wanted to tell because the first four episodes really are trying to tell one story and then the last two episodes that we've gotten five and six are telling a completely different story yeah i'm gonna i was telling you the other day i was like i'm gonna be really interested to see this show when it's fully like out i'm just yeah. go straight through it because it's felt so choppy getting it uh-huh. just once a week it feels like they made one long script and then like arbitrarily chopped it into episodes uh-huh so it, it i think it's going to 
hopefully benefit from a like a straight watch through yeah but i don't know i'm gonna have to wait and see <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah i think there's a lot here uh, around the various things like that's been a fun part of it and now that we've gotten like set in the story it's like mm-hmm. okay here we go yeah it really does feel like we've just started yeah <laughs> which is ridiculous <laughs> yeah like we had five, basically over. four episodes of nothing happening, and then two where we've got more character growth than the previous four combined. Uh huh. And that's disappointing. Yes. But these last two episodes have been quite good, mm-hmm. so it's it's very it's very whiplash giving. <laughs> yes, honestly, yeah. I mean, I feel like I've come to know and enjoy these characters just in the last two episodes more than I have in the first four. So. Uh huh. <laughs> Yeah. It's great. <laughs> uh-huh. But let us know your thoughts on this theory of Vernestra Rowe and the m- mysterious stranger and possibly having them be master and apprentice or at least somewhat involved in this timeline. I mean, just look at that scar. That's not uh-huh. a normal scar. It's not a normal scar. lightsaber stab in the back scar. <laughs> let us know in the comments below. Check out our podcast and may the force be with you.